There's nothing wrong with enjoying looking at the surface of the ocean itself, except that when you finally see what goes on underwater, you realize that you've been missing the whole point of the ocean. Staying on the surface all the time is like going to the circus and staring at the outside of the tent. <laughs> Dave Barry. Dave Barry. Don't know who that is. I looked it up. He's just some some writer. Some smart guy. A comic writer. Oh. Uh, yeah. For like uh for uh newspapers. Oh, like newspapers back in the day. Comic strip. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah, so I was like That's a solid quote. It's insightful. Sitting but then up. again, a lot of comedians are pretty insightful. Yeah. I mean you kinda not have all. No, not not all. That goes for anybody, but you kinda have to be for like stand up, right? Like yeah. Other than just say like, uh, you know, my wife, what a dumb bitch kind of joke, you know? <laughs> or just be like sitting on stage and just, oh, How's it going? Uh, yeah, you got to have the, got to have your finger on the pulse, you know, stay relevant. Exactly. Yeah. hundred episodes, people. It's a big one. We've made it to a hundred episodes. It was a big goal of ours to, to get to. Yep. So. We've done it. At, at least we got there. We've done it. But let's roll straight into this episode. I am Michael Lee. And I'm Matt. And roll that intro. Big. Effin. Nerd. What the fuck was that? <laughs> Never you mind. Tell me you didn't do it. I thought you just did. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I had to one up you somehow. We'll come back to this later, <laughs> or we'll just never talk about it again. No, we're coming back to it later. <laughs> I gotta know. <laughs> I gotta. Know. I gotta know. Oh my god! <laughs> don't worry about it. Yeah, don't don't you guys worry about it. It's none of your business. It's not PG. It's um, it's it's during intro shenanigans. Yeah, yeah. You'll never know. That's right. No one's gonna know. They're gonna know. Are you ready? You bitch. <laughs> no hand, just all, all mind I, slap. I was like, I was like, let me <laughs> let me see how long it's gonna take him this time. If I finish this sip, it was the big side eye that gave it to me. I was like, oh, what's up? Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh. <laughs> Hit me with smack fact. All right, I'm gonna give you Our fucking fact. two of them. Oh, two, two of them. Two for the hundo. Yep, yep. Special, just for you <laughs> and you <laughs> <laughs> and me. <laughs> Cause I'm I'm a good boy who goes pee pee in the potty without the bidet. Without the bidet. <laughs> Did you try the bidet? No. I only Why had not? To pee. I only had to pee. You could have tried it. You still could have tried it. That's extra weird. <laughs> <laughs> Don't need to use it. And just like oh, let's see. <laughs> oh hello. <laughs> oh hello. All right. <clears throat> First fact. Did you know the Pacific Ocean is wider than the Moon? You knew that. Anyway. No, I didn't. Okay. I didn't, did. but it, it, when you said it, I was like, yeah, that makes total sense. Yeah. Wider than the moon. Yeah, it says at its widest point from Indonesia all the way to Colombia, the Pacific Ocean, wider than the moon, by quite a lot. This expanse of ocean is 12,300 miles across, which is more than five times the diameter of the moon. Damn. It's fucking crazy. Damn. And people sailed that shit. Just like in fucking wooden boats. So anyone who <laughs> flies over the Pacific Ocean is always flying the diameter of the moon. I guess that's or flying more than the diameter of the moon. That's the way of looking at it, yeah. And then Fuck. there's people who, you know, pilots make that trip or whatever multiple oh, yeah. times. So they're just like, I've been to the moon and back. Even no though problem. technically they don't go across, they go up and around mm -hmm. due to the rotation of the earth and the airstreams in the sky and the, the earth plane. is flat though so they just <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> the earth is flat though so like i mean the right dia diameter what the fuck what do you even mean? that implies that it's round absolutely not <laughs> all right second fact the mediterranean used to be dry yeah hmm it used to be a dry basin until some five million years ago during the Zan Zanklian Flood, uh, in which water from the Atlantic poured through the Strait of Gibraltar and hmm. filled the basin. 
Theories abound as to how this happened, but one catastrophic interpretation has the basin filling up in only two years thanks to a massive torrent of water. Jeez. Two years and filling up the fucking Mediterranean. Five million years ago, it took two years to Just, fill the Mediterranean. <sighs> I wish I could go back in time and see that. I want to see what, how that happens because I've been to Gibraltar. I've been oh, to yeah, the yeah. point. I've been to the point where Gibraltar, which is like almost one of the southernmost points of Spain, it's an English territory, very small. <laughs> it's a little island. Right? Very no. Uh, I mean, like you could no, you can't really consider it an island, but it's a very like mm. small strip. I'm talking like the tiniest community you've ever, uh, the tiniest like country you've ever seen. <laughs> Literally, you could walk to the tip and back to the border where where Spain is on the other side, and in maybe less than a day, walk. It's that tiny. Damn. The on the other side of the Mediterranean, you could see the northern tip of Africa. Oh shit! Like wow. you, we were standing up on top of this old World War One bunker. And we were looking out, and you just see the hills over in northern Africa, and you're just like, "That's crazy!" Just looking at Africa, there it is, right there. So, I was Wild. like thinking of that, and then thinking five million years ago, that's just water just coming in. Yeah, and it probably would have been lower, right? Yeah, I would. I mean, yeah. I don't. Even, I don't even know how that would work. I want to see that though. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That water made it a uh, deeper, right? Cutting fucking. Water. Yeah, water ero- do that erosion. Yeah, that's the word. That's the one. <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> Fucking um, that'd be dope. Just like go back in time, sit on top of like, what mountain in Greece? Can I think of what mountain in Greece? Mount Taitos, Taitos in Sparta or whatever. That's uh, all I can think of. Yeah, I think you can see the Mediterranean from top of that, right? I would imagine. Uh, yeah, the Just, Mediterranean is all that the whole area near like Spain, all the way to yeah. Italy, to Greece, to. Uh, some parts of of Middle East, back. That's that's the only mountain I could think of because that's where they would throw fucking babies off a mountain. Mountain. <laughs> those, this baby's fucked up. <laughs> throw it off the mountain. Jesus. But wouldn't that be rad? Just sitting on top of the mountain, just like watching, just like way fucking you know off and just. You you would see it before the sound would reach you. You know you'd be that far away. You know, five million years ago, you know humans. I don't think existed. I don't think so. Well, I don't think so. Mm, don't quote me on that, but five million years ago, you definitely would have been in a state of evolution where you would have been like, like the world's ending type like, shit. Yeah, just sit down like it's over. <gasps> God is real and he's angry. All right, peeps. Second part two. The exploring of our oceans, as stated last week, was going to be a deep dive (laughs) (laughs) into marine life. (laughs) You okay? No, no, wait. (laughs) It's just... It's like I have to go censor that. (laughs) Um, And it's not just for modern day animals. I did mention to Matt off the record i don't remember if i mentioned it on record last week but it would be th- like any type of animal that has ever lived within the ocean because they you know they're now sand at the bottom of the yeah ocean. yeah uh, i think pretty much i mean that sounds right to me fuck it why not <laughs> so now we're just gonna list off a bunch of fucking crazy animals with crazy abilities or Fucking, Diets, uh, whatever. Diet, diet ability, fucking weird ass bodies. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, or the lack thereof, depending how deep you go, right? Because mm-hmm. all the pressure can't have fucking bones. So uh, I <clears throat> wanted to start off with the giant Pacific octopus. Fuck yeah! How giant? Uh, from what I've seen or what I've read, they grow up to about ten feet long. Yeah. Like if they're like, they do a full mm. and stretch out, they're about 10 feet long, Damn. but I will tell you more. So the giant Pacific octopus scientific name and enter octopus 
Doflaney. <laughs> that sounds like some Game of Thrones shit. Yeah, right. Dothraki. Dothlaney. Yeah. Dothlaney. Yeah, that's a dope ass kind of name, actually. Dothlaney. That's pretty cool. Uh, is the largest species of octopus. I'll remember that for my next Baldur's Gate. <laughs> <laughs> Known for its impressive size and intelligence. They inhabit the Pacific Ocean, ranging from Japan to Southern California, typically in rocky reefs and shallow waters up to depths around 2,000 meters. Uh, they, gi the giant octopuses are solitary creatures and primarily nocturnal hunters feeding on crustaceans, fish, and other mollusks. They have a short lifespan of around three to five years during which they go through a single reproductive cycle before dying shortly after laying eggs. <laughs> Fun fact, <clears throat> when I went to the Marine, uh, the Monterey Bay Aquarium, mm -hmm. the octopus was laying eggs. Oh, shit. Then I read this fact and I went, oh, no. Oh, no. He died. He probably, or she. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought to myself, oh, no. They died. And I started getting like, really sad. And it was like. <laughs> We just watched the end of his life. They're like, <laughs> we literally, me and my girlfriend were like, oh, wow, they're laying eggs. It's so cool. And then reading that fact, I just thinking back on it, I go, oh, fuck. Right after that, they just they laid their eggs and just swam away and just. It was very interesting watching it laying eggs, though, because it was doing it on the glass. So you're literally seeing from the underside of the octopus how it's happening. And you're just like, what the fuck? Sounds a little pornographic. <laughs> no, give, me, give me the octopus. <laughs> That's a James Bond movie. You can't get mad at me for saying that. Uh, they also have, <laughs> they also have camouflage, which means mm. they can change color and texture to blend in with their surroundings. <clears throat> they have problem-solving skills. Oh. Uh, they have been observed solving puzzles and opening jars to access food, demonstrating their cognitive abilities. I do know octopi. I believe that's plural. For octopus occupy i'm not even sure i think it is I'm not even I'm sure pretty sure would you read it what huh would you read it i don't know but i've heard it i'm you want me to look it up i've heard a lot of things matt <laughs> These have not, yeah not look at look at because i'm actually curious because i was gonna when i was gonna mention this later on or not later on earlier because this is octopuses <laughs> which sounds as which sounds more sus oh okay so they're both acceptable i said what is the plural of octopus they said both octopuses and octopi are acceptable i prefer octopi me too sounds better than octopuses yeah that sounds sus <laughs> it's like it's like look at all those mooses <laughs> mooses <laughs> yeah. uh regeneration they have the ability to regenerate lost limbs oh, yeah. although the process takes time and energy communication uh throughout the body they communicate using the colors. Hmm. You know how they change colors for their camouflage? Well, they also do that in order to communicate toward, to other animals, like, I'm a threat. Yeah. Or lure in fish and be like, I'm I'm the coral. Come here. Come here. I forgot you, little fucker. Exactly. <laughs> Snatch them up. Uh, and, yeah. So, that's pretty much it for the giant octopus, but they are definitely huge. I actually... Yeah, they didn't actually put a, a a size of it, but I do know that at least ten feet. Damn, in length. That that ain't small. And the fact that they're invertebrates, so they like tiny holes like this big, they'll just be like, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Looking like uh, what's his name from X Men One, the fucking like senator. Oh yeah. The senator Magneto and them fucking whatever. He's all wet. And he just <laughs> through the bars. Yep. Exactly right. like that. I mean, he just turned into a fucking puddle, I think, didn't he? <laughs> if you guys have seen 2001 X-Men. Yeah. Or 2000 X-Men. Yeah. Next. So the ones I got are just pretty quick little fucking things, blurbs about some crazy ass animals. Have you heard of the fucking Stargazer? Not by that name, I don't think. I, I thought I had their scientific names on here, but alas, I do not. Mm. I don't think you would have got them anyway. The fuck does that mean? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> the fuck? You're like you struggle on names more than I do. And like, like, yeah, wait, huh? I'm just sitting here like, yeah. So, <laughs> so that's not what we're talking about right now, is it? <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, stargazer. He sits just beneath the sand, uh, with only his eyes, their eyes, whatever, and sharp teeth poking out, ready to ambush the prey. 
and it's got a uh, venomous spines and it gives electric shocks to unwary prey. Uh, That's what that fucker looks like, just waiting for you to come swim by right over him. I have heard about them, never heard them called as a stargazer, but that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, because they're just sitting there, just waiting. Some swing by, snatch. Jeez, it's like a, it's like, like a, a piranha in a sense. Yeah, almost just a little half buried piranha snatch. More or a sneaky piranha. A sneaky piranha. Piranha. Parmesan and whatever. Fuck. All right. Uh. Here, I'll, I'll do like two since mine are quick, and then we'll go back to one of yours. I got it. Uh, let's see. I got uh, the the vampire squid. Heard of that? Oh, you motherfucker. Uh, that was one of mine. <laughs> well, since since yours are bigger, I can I can. I'll scroll do through it, it and, get, and give a little bit more info okay. on it I, since that will be. So, yeah, it's uh, the dark depths of the sea, this red-eyed squid, his webbed arms. It, its webbed arms look mm-hmm. like a jet black cape of mm-hmm. a vampire. Hence the name. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, when when it's raised in defense, is what it looks like. Uh, using jet propulsion to quote unquote fly through the water, it expels a sticky cloud of bioluminescent mucus from the tips of its arms. And there's a, there's a picture of that little fucker right there. Mm-hmm. All red too. They yeah. uh, they actually look pretty fucking creepy. I'm not gonna lie. Oh yeah, I, I've seen pictures a lot. Um, and then despite their name, the vampire squid is not actually a squid, but its own order. It's it's a, its own like, like classification yeah. of wow yeah so which, which I was like but it looks like a squid yeah look like squid but it's squid then again I, I think cuttlefish are also the same sense like they look like a squid but they're in their own category hmm you ever seen a cuttlefish um I have before I don't remember what they look like but I've seen them they're like really large head with tiny legs and yeah i know they use those in a lot of like dna fucking like oh cuttlefish yeah oh you know what i, I think i'm thinking of jurassic park when they were like oh yeah well, how do you make this oh we splice the dna with this and with the cuttlefish and DNA frogs, and this okay. and all that shit yeah i think that's when jurassic world i think so i think that's when they were doing that yeah and they got the cuttlefish uh so <laughs> yeah they're different their own order of vampires the vampire remorphidae for me. Da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> what, you okay? <laughs> yeah. It's actually a pretty fucking Latin ass name. Well, it looks like an easy name to read. Vampyromorphida. Within true. within the cephalopod class. Okay, so, so it's in the in, in the general umbrella of it, it's still But they're their own like subspecies. Yes. Mm-hmm. Just like scorpions are like in the spider family. I think. Yeah, but they're not exactly. actually spiders. Yeah. They're technically arachnids. Mm-hmm. Uh, so vampire <laughs> squids are opportunistic predators that primarily feed on marine snow, which is a mixture of organic detritus and microscopic organisms that drifts down from the surface. I think that's detritus, but you're close. To... I think I know the word you're talking. About. I think it's pronounced detritus, but it doesn't matter. It mattered enough for you to interrupt. I know. Me. I know. I didn't need to. But I did. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> um, they use their long retractable filaments to capture food. Mm-hmm. And then <clears throat> their defense mechanisms, despite its name and appearance, the vampire squid is not a blood sucking predator. Instead, it employs several unique defense mechanisms to evade predators and survive in the deep sea. When threatened, it can invert its cloak like webbing to form a defensive posture, obscuring its body and right. potentially confusing predators. Make them seem bigger than they are. It does that, and, and on the underside, there's like these little arms that look like spikes, so they can straighten those out, and it looks uh. like a big ball of spike. It's like it Shit. looks like a mace. Yeah, go ahead and eat me. Yeah, I'm a spiky ball. So not gonna feel good. They're pretty. No, they're they're one of my favorite. I guess not squids now. Cephalopods. <laughs> I have to say cephalopods now. I guess so. <sighs> if we're gonna be accurate. <clears throat> yeah. No, I mean you said vampire squid. I went motherfucker. <laughs> God damn it. But at least you talked about it, so I could knock that off my list too. Fucking right in there. Which shortens mine. I got I got one. I want a caveat from that since you said that vampire squid is not a bloodsucker but i got one that is mm-hmm. uh, a lamprey eel 
and they're fucking yeah. terrifying. I feel like I've heard of that one. I, I've it? definitely heard the name. I'm going to show you a picture. It's a prehistoric parasitic fish. It, uh, it detects vibrations in the water, then latches onto its prey, feeding on flesh or sucking blood. And uh, apparently the lamprey is a protected species, and the return to UK rivers is a symbol of improved water quality. And I don't know why they'd ever want these fucking nightmares back. Look at this fucking thing. Wait, they want them back? They're trying to bring it back? Yeah, because they're a protected yeah. species. And them coming back to the UK waters is a sign like, oh, water quality is getting better. But look at the... So uh, they're like a sea leech. Yeah. An ocean, an ocean leech. That's what you're looking at, yeah. And I'd see this, and all I think is the fucking sandworms from Dune. Like, that had to be part of it. it had to be part of it. Like, look at that fucking thing. God. Orcas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just... God. Yeah, that thing is fucking gross looking. Yeah, yeah I'm going to stop looking at it. That, that one's worse. All right. Orcas, <laughs> also known as killer whales. Mm -hmm. We all know about orcas, we or at least should know, are apex predators and highly social marine mammals belonging to the dolphin family. That's crazy. Remember that. It's a porpoise, not a whale. Yeah. Contrary to popular belief. That is crazy. Which, if you think about how intelligent they are, how they move within the water, how they communicate, how they travel, and and typically what they eat mm -hmm. makes so much more sense that they belong to the dolphin family than... What do dolphins eat? Like other fish? Small yeah. fish? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They eat other fish. They also are very abusive. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they do things to... To other fish and people. They are, and... they are one of the only other mammals that have sex for pleasure. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. And if you ain't giving it up, <clears throat> they don't take it. Uh, the orcas are obviously recognizable by their black and white appearance with the big white spots on their head looking like an eye, but it's not actually an eye. Yep. I remember being younger and thinking, that's an eye. And they're like, mm -mm. No, it's, it's this little little <laughs> thing right at the very tippy tippy top of the mm. the circle. If their eyes were that big. It'd be easy for any animal to just <laughs> knock that fucking thing out. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> their diet is, uh, or they're opportunistic hunters with a diverse diet that includes fish, seals, sea lions, dolphins, whales, and even sharks. Damn. And then, depending on where you're at in the world, and where you see these orcas, they'll have different diets. So the same orcas that live up in the northern waters and eat seals mm -hmm. and penguins and stuff like that, they won't eat other things when you go down south, where they'll probably eat fish, mm. other sharks, stuff like that. Damn. Yeah, no, they're like, we got seals at home. We don't need this shit. <laughs> yeah. um, and then they have a unique social structure. Oh. Orcas live in a complex social groups called pods, mm -hmm. which consists of several individuals, typically led by a matriarch. Pods can vary in size from a few individuals to over 50 members. That's a lot of orcas. That's a lot of whales. Or These, whatever. Yeah, or, <laughs> or whatever. Or por porpoise. Killer, killer <laughs> dolphins. Yeah, killer big ass dolphins. <laughs> These social structures facilitate cooperative hunting communication and the transfer of knowledge within the group uh, and then or because of that knowledge orcas are among the most intelligent animals on earth with complex and social uh, complex social behaviors problem solving skills and cultural traditions cultural traditions damn it's pretty hard to like imagine that like whales have a culture yes it's like yes and no because yeah. like I mean, everything has a culture right <clears throat> yeah but because humans, we think of culture in such a different way, and then animals are just like, no, this is this is how life is. Mm -hmm. This is life, motherfucker. Mm -hmm, yeah. See us in the wild. See what happens. Fuck around, find out. Yeah, so they'll exhibit behaviors such as cooperative hunting, tool use, and learning from one another. They Overall, are <clears throat> they are sorry. Overall, orcas are fascinating and highly adaptable predators that play a crucial role in marine ecosystems. Understanding and conserving these magnificent creatures is essential for the health of our oceans. They may be a big bully, but we need them. We need them. <laughs> it, it, didn't you say, like, last episode or episode before, they're, they're like the wolves of the sea or something? That's a nickname they have, yeah. Nah. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, though. They're in packs, pods, whatever, and... Hunting together, such as wolves. Debatably, they're actually probably smarter than wolves. If you were to, like, 
I would say they would because I mean even some of their hunting styles, the way they get seals off of icebergs and shit like that. Oh, like one will fucking bank. Like fi- <clears throat> they'll they'll try to break it by themselves, but then eventually they'll learn or they'll talk to each other, and three or four of them will go just under the surface, creating this dip in the water. And when that dip hits the fucking mm-hmm. ice, it breaks the ice apart, making that the ice that the seal is on a lot smaller, yeah. quicker for them to reach. And the way they look to see if there's prey, they'll just pop their head out and just be like, hmm. Anybody out here? Uh, I see you over there. Yeah. I'm coming. I'll, I'm coming. I'll be over there. I'll get you. I'll get He's you. He's just like, fuck. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I, I, love, I love orcas so much. The, bad, the amount ass. of intelli- intelligence they have over fucking however many years they've been around. Fuck. Yeah, those fuckers are genius. Yeah. Um, Scary you, smart. <clears throat> you want me to go again? or I, I, I got freaking three other ones. All right, go for it. So uh, let's go. Uh, the Bobbit Worm. This fucking thing is fucked up. So Is, is that the one that lives in the sand? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's, so it, it's uh, here it goes. It says he may look fairly harmless. I don't know who thinks that. This fucker looks terrifying. <laughs> I would not think that and go, little bitch. No, no. Uh, yeah, so waiting in the sand with only a small amount of its body, you know, kind of like the stargazer a little bit, except minus his face, just poking out a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but hidden beneath is the rest of its body, which can grow up to 10 feet long. Uh, the speed at which the worm attacks and the power of its mouth can snap its prey clean into it then injects a toxin to stun or kill its prey, and that's... Yep. That looking. <clears throat> I've seen I've seen videos of those God. things hunting. Ooh. It is crazy. Yeah, I'm not gonna watch that. They're essentially the centipedes. They're essentially centipedes. Yeah, that live Big, in the water. Ten feet long, fucking. <sighs> bro, it's interesting though. It like watching them. They'll come out. And the, their jaws look like this, right? Yeah, like, they got mandibles. Yeah, just like just like centipedes, and they'll sit here. And they'll kind of just like wave like this, I'm doing it in the video. <laughs> yeah. they'll, wave, they'll wave like this, and then as soon as the fish comes through, it's lightning quick, Bam. fast as fuck. They'll just boom, and then snap, and then just like break the fish, dragging it into the ground. Can you imagine a more gruesome death? No. Fuck. Just you're a fish, just like hey, what the fuck? You're just like. <laughs> Hmm, such a mess. Ah! <laughs> it was a half. Watching your bottom half. Just what the fuck? Damn nature. You crazy. Seahorses. Matt. <laughs> They're in the horse family. I knew it. <laughs> I fucking knew it. Uh, oh, fuck. I actually forget what family they belong to. They'll probably tell me in this, but I... It was interesting. I was like, what the fuck? I have heard what family they're in, but that was so long ago I forgot. So yeah. I hope they tell I us. know it's something weird. It's something like you would never guess. Seahorses are fascinating and unique fit marine fish known for their distinctive appearance and intriguing behaviors. Uh, seahorses have a horse-like head and a tubular snout, <laughs> a prehensile, prehensile <laughs> tail. And a bony external I thought you were going to say boner. <laughs> and a boner. What the fuck? Yes. <laughs> I mean, with how many kids they got? Fu- <laughs> yeah, just fucking just bricked up all day. <laughs> just, ah, ah. <laughs> some for you, some for you. <laughs> they swim upright propelled by a small dorsal fin and fluttering pectoral fins, uh, which are used for steering rather than propulsion. Uh, they are found in shallow coastal waters around around the world, typically in seagrass beds, coral reefs, mangroves, and estuaries. Estuary. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We found out yeah. about those. Yeah. Pop quiz, Matt. What is it? They're where the ocean and like lakes meet or some shit. Rivers. Rivers. I was gonna say, fucking dude. I was gonna say rivers the first time, but I thought it was wrong. <laughs> Uh, so they prefer habitats with plenty of hiding places where they can anchor themselves with their tails. Mm. Seahorses are carnivorous mm. and primarily feed on tiny crustaceans, small fish, and plankton. Did not know that. Me either. They use their long snouts to suck in prey with a quick motion aided by a powerful suction force. You okay? <laughs> Just like just over here, just, they have a what? <laughs> oh, 
One of the most unique aspects of seahorses is their reproductive behavior. <clears throat> Unlike most fish, it is the male seahorses that become pregnant and give birth to live young. Females deposit their eggs into a specialized pouch on the male's abdomen, where uh, they are fertilized and incubated until they hatch. So mm. instead of the man throwing sperm <laughs> into the woman, the woman takes her eggs, shoots them in there, puts them in the man, and the man fertilizes the eggs while they're inside of his own body, and then it's wild. So the pouch, they're like lightweight fucking like marsupials almost. They got a little pouch. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't know they had a pouch. Yeah. Because I've, I've seen I've seen the seahorse give birth and it's like, and just fucking. Yeah, they're just like hundreds, hundreds of, hundreds of them coming out. And you're just like, what the fuck? But yeah, I didn't know it was a pouch. Man, me neither. Oh, surprisingly enough, they did not state what Son family the bitch. I'm gonna find out. <laughs> you find out. I'll go. I'll go on the next one. We'll uh, we'll we'll bring it back around. Bull sharks. Bull sharks. Fun fact: bull shark, a specific type of bull shark that was found in a river that was eating men, or eating men in general, humans. Right. That is what Jaws was based off of. A bull shark. Not a great white shark. Great white sharks are actually quite docile compared to bull sharks. Yeah. Bull sharks are very aggressive. Them tiger sharks, hammerheads are like the most yes. aggressive, right? Yes. Yeah. Did you find out? Uh, it says they're actually a type of fish closely related to pipe fishes belonging to the scientific family of <laughs> Cygna sing, sing, the day. Yep. Pipe fish. Uh, yeah. Those are the long ones. Literally have the same type of mouth. But they, they're long and skinny. Hmm. The seahorse's scientific genus name, Hippocampus, is Greek for bent horse. <laughs> they're like, that looks like a horse, but somebody just... <laughs> bent horse. <laughs> All right. Back to the bull shark. Scientifically known as... <laughs> <laughs> yep. Carcarnus Lake. Leucus. Yep. Sure. <laughs> yep. Why not? <laughs> I'm not saying the science. <laughs> nah. Are a species of shark known for their aggressive behavior, adaptability, and ability to inhabit both freshwater and saltwater environments. There are terror in both fucking neighborhoods. Mm hmm. They have a robust, stocky build with a broad, Flat snout and small eyes. They are typically gray on top and white on the underside, providing camouflage in both open ocean and river environments. They are dis uh, they have a distinctive triangular dorsal fin, and have and can grow up to eleven feet in length. Damn, that's big too. They're big, big son, bitch. big angry fucker is what he is. Yeah, and that and that's why I wanted to talk about them too, because the crazy ability that they're. Uh, their gills can do in order to essentially transform their body to get ready to go into either salt water or fresh water. <laughs> like that's, that's crazy. And they've been found in rivers all the time. Mm. <laughs> like they just fucking shit up. I think uh the Amazonian is what they inhabit the most. Damn. Just in there tearing ass. They them and crocodiles they they get into fights. Oh, I know that. That's a fight. I want to see that fight. Who do you think wins? Crocodile. I was gonna say a crocodile's <laughs> got more like maneuverability. I think, maneuverability, right? but and arms, armor, <laughs> armor. Bull sharks are found in tropical and subtropical waters worldwide, inhabiting coastal areas, estuaries, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. rivers, and even freshwater lakes and rivers. Damn. Remember that the next time you go camping. Yeah, you know, let's go take a dip in the river. Yeah, think about it. If that river, if that lake or river is connected to an ocean, which typically. Yeah, they, they, use, are. they usually are at some point. Yeah. yeah. Somewhere along the line. It's possible. Um, they are one of the few shark species capable of tolerating low salinity levels, mm. allowing them to venture far upstream into rivers and lakes. Mm. Uh, they are also opportunistic predators with a diverse diet, including fish, rays, turtles, dolphins, seabirds, and other sharks. Their powerful jaws, jaws are serrated with teeth uh, and serrated teeth. Sorry enable them to feed on a wide range of prey 
I want to specifically talk about their aggressiveness. Bull sharks are known for their aggressive behavior and are responsible for a significant portion of shark attacks on humans. Significant. Leave the great white shark alone. Yeah. He's not that scary. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> he just looks big and scary. Exactly. But he's but all right. He's like a teddy bear. Don't fuck with him. Yeah. Yeah, I, I watched a video, like a marine biologist lady talking about that, <clears throat> and she said like the same thing. She's like, the great whites are cool, man. They're just like chilling. Mm-hmm. Don't fuck with them. Yeah. But that goes with any animal. Don't fuck with it. Even, if you want to get fucked with back. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Particularly uh, in shallow... Murky waters near river mouths and estuaries are where the humans usually get attacked. Mm. Uh, their tolerance for freshwater habitats also brings them into close proximity to humans in areas where other shark species are less common. So their ecological role, though, as an apex predator, uh, they play a crucial role in maintaining the balance of marine ecosystems by controlling prey populations and influencing the behavior of other species, their presence in freshwater ecosystems also indicates the health of these habitats. Hmm. So it's a blessing and a curse, I suppose. You got to take the good with the bad. Yep. That's it's not all good ever. That's typically what they, they say. I got another shark. Yeah, sharks! A fucking goblin shark. I know that ugly fucker. Yeah, yeah. I knew about him too when I saw him. I was like, oh yeah, I'm talking about <laughs> So goblin sharks... I actually have the scientific name for this. I guess it was on this list, but I guess I cut it off on the other ones. His scientific name is whew, okay, mm-hmm. crazy like Japanese kind of sound shit. Uh, Mit, Mitsukurina Austoni? It's at the bottom. Mitsukurina. Oh, man. It's been so long since I read a Japanese word. All right. Mitsukurina. Yeah. I would say that. Austoni. Good enough. I, yeah, not too bad. <laughs> um, yeah. So. They are arguably the world's deepest living shark, making their home at more than a thousand meters below sea level. Their standout feature, you know, and uh, they look pretty fucked up, is uh, their huge mouth. The animal's entire jaw can be projected forward, which mm-hmm. we've seen them just kind of chilling up, hmm? almost, almost <laughs> like a, almost like alien in a sense. Mm, yeah, like in a weird way. That's crazy. Yeah, I've seen them just kind of swimming along, chilling, and all of a sudden, just like, huh. Whole mouth just shoots out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it can be projected forward, trap prey in its mouth. It says this is possible because the jaw is not fused to the skull, but it but uh, held in position with cartilage and ligaments. Mm-hmm. Fucking crazy. Uh, researchers believe this bizarre adaptation is the result of the shark's habitat. You know, being the deep ocean has a relatively less diverse group of creatures that call it home. The fact the goblin shark can swallow a, ride, a wide range of different sized prey gives it a chance to make the most out of its, you know, scarcity in the hunting grounds there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. yeah. If you go look at us, the skeletal structure of a goblin shark, it's, it's very interesting, very mechanical. I don't think I've actually seen like a skeleton structure of one. Uh, I can't recall if I've seen it either via book or if I saw it at the Okinawa Uh aquarium. There's, there's, they had hell of fucking skeletons. I was like, that's rad. So you can see the size of all these creatures and you're just like, fuck. <laughs> I'm so small. <laughs> Damn. Not today. And start fucking yeah. <laughs> Get these guys. What the fuck up that shark? Goblin shark. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> oh, <Ugly> fuck. <laughs> Saltwater crocodiles. <clears throat> ah. Also known as an estuarian crocodile or salties salties <laughs> uh they're the largest living reptiles and formidable apex predators found in brackish and freshwater habitats in the tropical regions of asia australia and the pacific islands i did not know they're in the pacific islands no i didn't know that either what the fuck that's scary you never hear about like crocodiles and shit over there i don't i don't know if it's like deep pacific like hawaii deep but then again i don't know Fucking still close enough, I guess. Uh, you know, they, a few have fucking wandered over that direction. If yeah, I mean, if they can <laughs> swim that far, I actually don't know what their their traveling habits are like. Yeah, but I do know that they're huge. Bitch. Saltwater crocodiles have a robust, elongated, 
<laughs> there was extra spice on that you robust. You have to say robust like that. Robust. <laughs> robust and bust. <laughs> robust and bust. <laughs> bust and bust. <laughs> My lord. <laughs> Elongated body covered in armored scales with a powerful tail used for swimming and propulsion. They typically have a gray or olive green coloration, which provides effective camouflage in their environment. Adults can reach up to 20 to 23 feet. <laughs> oh my God. Why are you so big? And weigh over 2,200 pounds. It's a fucking ton. Nah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure 20 to 22 feet is also... The whole room. This whole room. <clears throat> Bro. I'm trying to visualize that, and I don't want to anymore. Oh, my God. And I really don't want to <laughs> anymore. <laughs> scary. Like, just looking down, and like, he starts there. And... He ends over there. <laughs> just what the fuck? Tip to tip. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they inhabit a, a range of aquatic environments, including mangrove swamps, estuaries, rivers, and... They were really and, hammering home the estuary shit. Hey, man, I might as well hit them all. Yeah. <laughs> Although the seahorse one was an accident. I didn't know they actually occupied estuaries. But, uh... And coastal lagoons. lagoons. They are highly adaptable and can tolerate a wide range of salinity levels. Allowing them to venture into both saltwater and freshwater habitats. Mm -hmm. Their behavior, they are solitary animals with territorial males defending their territory against intruders, including other crocodiles. They're most active at night, spending much of the day basking in the sun to regulate their body temperature. Yeah, they're cold blooded, right? Cold blooded. Cold blooded. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, they're reptiles. Mm -hmm. So cold blooded for sure. Human interactions. Saltwater crocodiles are responsible for attacks on humans, particularly in regions where humans popul or human populations overlap with crocodile habitats. Encounters between humans and saltwater crocodiles can be dangerous and sometimes fatal, leading to efforts to manage human crocodile conflicts and raise awareness about crocodile safety. Yeah, don't fuck with them. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, why? Don't. don't. That fucker's a dinosaur, and he's angry all the time. Speaking of dinosaur, yeah. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta scroll a little bit. I think it was the last one that I had looked up. I got one quick one after that. Go for it, right? Let me do it first. All right. This is the the flabby whalefish. <laughs> Ew. Here, quick. Here's a quick little like drawing kind of picture thing. Oh, good lord, that's yeah. a big mouth, big ass mouth. So yeah, um. Flabby whalefish, <clears throat> some of the deepest living fish in the entire ocean. They can be found throughout the southern hemisphere and live at depths of up to uh, 3,500 meters below sea level. Sheesh. Fucking deep, as there is little light down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no shit. Um, they only have vestigial eyes and use a lateral line system for navigation and vibration-sensing pores to find prey. A line a La you said lateral line system? Lateral line system. Don't really know what the fuck that means. Yeah, I can't. I can't. Mm, I don't have context enough. Yeah. Anyways. But the vibration sensing pores on its body is crazy. That, but then the, the crazier thing is the females of the species are uh, typically colored in bright red and have no ribs, allowing their stomachs to bloat to massive sizes. You know, don't eat me. Fucking, uh, this gives the predator the opportunity to eat prey that would otherwise be too large to digest. And, sorry, this I thought it was the females. The males are actually the crazy part. Adult males do not eat at all as their jaws are fused shut, instead relying on the leftover shells that they consumed as an infant for nutrients. What? So when they're young, like, you, they're young, like, you better fucking eat up. You ain't getting it again. Once you hit a certain age, your mouth just fuses shut, apparently. That's fucking crazy yeah that's what why like fuck? i saw the like picture and i was like oh, that looks boring and then i read it and i was like holy shit thank got no mouth oh <laughs> there's i don't even think there's a, a single deep sea creature that i could consider boring just because they gotta fucking survive down there yeah and even if like <laughs> maybe just at a cursory glance like it's a big ass fish there's a lot more going on mm -hmm. like like you know the male and female male no mouth. 
No, no mouth. At when you reach adult age. They're just like, as soon as you're an adult, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> Literally like kids, like, I don't want to eat. You fucking have to. Yeah. You have to. If you want to live long enough. <laughs> <laughs> so, for dinosaurs. Uh, this, not as far back as the dinosaurs, but is considered an ancient animal within our ocean. The Leviathan mm. Melvae. I know that first part means big. <laughs> uh, it's an an extinct species of predatory whale that lived approximately twelve to thirteen million years ago during the Miocene epoch. Pretty sure that's just an era. Epoch. I've I've heard that word epoch before. I don't. E p o c h. Yeah. Or I've, yeah. I've heard it, <clears throat> seen it in books and shit. I don't. Yeah. Anyway. The Leviathan Milve. Uh, Mil Milvale. <laughs> yep. <laughs> was one of the largest predators of its time rivalry rivaling oh my god rivalry so many like conflicting letters yeah. within, within the words rival <laughs> <laughs> the modern sperm whale uh, so damn. that was his that was his competitor also i do know that he was also competing with megalodon i guess we know uh, who won Neither. Sperm whales are still around. Uh, a, sp a sperm whale might be a cousin. Ah. I'm curious. Because they looked very similar. Oh, shit. In a sense. But they only rival it as in its size. Mm. It is estimated to have reached lengths of 44 to 57 feet and had a massive, robust <laughs> skull equipped with enormous teeth. These teeth, some measure over... 14 inches in length were the largest uh, or were the largest of any known mammal and were serrated just in, for an extra layer of fuck you indicating that it uh, that its role was a top predator yeah yeah uh, it belongs to the family Fisiteridae sure I think that's that sounds about right <laughs> Which also includes modern sperm whales. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So a sperm whale is a descendant of this creature, which makes sense because sperm whales are also very predatory. Yeah. They are fighters, hunters. They one of the, I think one of their main diets is squid. Mm -hmm. Giant squid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wasn't uh <clears throat> the whale in Moby Dick, wasn't that a fucking giant sperm whale, I think? It was named after the biblical sea monster Leviathan and the author Herman Melville, who wrote about whales in his novel Moby Dick. Moby Dick. The, fun fact: the whale's name was Mocha Dick, actually. Mocha, yeah, I do remember you mentioning that offline. But yeah, so fucking crazy. This dude, I mean, it, it lived. Near, looks like it lived near Peru, Chile, <clears throat> in those waters. Like the, like the warmer climate? Yeah. Understandable. Uh, it was likely an apex predator preying on a variety of marine animals. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> the extinction, the exact cause of its extinction is uncertain, but it is likely occurred, or it likely occurred during the late Epoch period, whatever the fuck. I'm not going to say it again. <laughs> As a result of environmental changes, mm. competition with other predators, or shifts in prey availability. Its extinction coincided with significant changes in marine ecosystems worldwide. I saw the skull. I saw the teeth. Fuck, bro. Oh, they have teeth of them? Yeah. They, they found the skull, the teeth, like that long. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. <clears throat> Goodbye. They're yeah, they're huge. And I, like I said, literally cousins of the sperm whale. Imagine that imagine sperm whales with not bigger jaws, but a jaw that or like say less of a thick snout mm -hmm. and then bigger teeth. Yeah. And bigger. Mm -hmm. I think uh sperm whales only go up to forty something feet. These fuckers are just trumping them. Yeah. Uh, like I said, the one of its 
or one of its uh, rivals was the Megalodon. So you can imagine those motherfuckers were getting it on. Ding, ding, ding in this corner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One big ass fish. And in this corner, another big ass fish. Wow. Oh. Fish. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Tomato potato. <laughs> <laughs> Tomato potato. Also want to talk about, since I talked about sperm whales and giant squid. Mm -hmm. The Kraken. If only that were real. I mean, if I could, like I said, the mysteries of the deep ocean that we don't know about, for all we know, there are things bigger than the giant squid that could, that probably related to it, that would fuck it up. Because yeah. they found, they, they saw, I know that for the longest time they knew about the giant squid, mm -hmm. but then uh, relatively recently they found out about the colossal squid. Fuck, I didn't know about that. That thing, while not as long as the giant squid, is fucking massive. Wide? Holy shit. Fucking trumps the size of a, of a giant squid. Fuck. Giant squids are very long, mm -hmm. slender. These fuckers are just wide. Yeah. Uh, giant squids are elusive deep sea cephalopods known for their immense, or their immense size and mysterious nature. Uh, they're one of the largest invertebrates with lengths reaching up to 43 feet. Hella big. <laughs> or, Dummy big. Or more, including their tentacles. Mm. Uh, they have a streamlined body, eight, long, eight arms, and two longer feeding tentacles equip, uh, equipped with suckers lined with sharp teeth. Yeah. It's the teeth, man. The suckers, those, there's the fucking spikes it's coming a, out of there. And they say, they say it's suckers, but it's, it doesn't even suck. It's literally just like the teeth that grab onto the skin. Yes. So it's almost like a bunch of miniature bites, just a bunch of little mouths grabbing you on an arm. Ouch. Uh, <laughs> their eyes are among the largest in the animal kingdom, measuring up to 10 inches. Mm -hmm. The size of a basketball is what they roughly are compared to. Jeez. Uh, they inhabit or they inhabit the the deep ocean, so anywhere from three hundred meters to a thousand meters. Uh, although they have been recorded at even greater depths, they have a wide distribution, occurring in all the world's oceans from the surface down to the abyssal depths. They do, I know, come up to the surface during the night. Huh. That's uh, they've been found up there. Just kind of floating, there. chilling. Yeah. Uh, despite their large size, though, they have a few natural predators in the deep ocean. However, they may fall prey to large deep sea predators such as the sperm whales mm -hmm. and deep sea sharks. In turn, they play a crucial role in deep sea ecosystems as top predators. So they're right here. They're right there. But they ain't number one. But they're in the top like three, five. I would say top five. Top five. But I do know that the sperm whale loves giant squid. <laughs> he likes himself some calamari. I get it, bro. Yeah, I get dude, it. I fucking I love it. calamari myself. Me too, man. <laughs> Me uh, and you, sperm whale. Me and you. <laughs> the discovery. Giant squids have long been the subject of myth and legend mm -hmm. with tales of encounters dating back centuries. However, it wasn't until relatively recently with advancements in deep sea exploration and technology that live specimens and evidence of giant squids were documented. The first photographs of the live giant squid in its natural habitat were captured in 2004. So not that long ago. No. Oh. And, and, you know, hindsight. Yeah. <laughs> no, fuck. Yeah. That's yesterday in the fucking grand scheme of things. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Another deep sea creature I just wanted to throw in. I got two more that I, I want to specifically talk about. Yeah. The anglerfish. Ah, yeah. We know the little one. The, oh, what is that? Yeah. Oh, I feel so happy. It's just in the background, you just see teeth. Teeths. Yeah. Finding Nemo, if you guys are, are you know, if anybody was sad, lost. Sad people who never watched good movies in their lifetime. For, for <laughs> those of you who have never touched a butt. <laughs> <That's the point. laughs> uh, they're they're deep sea fish known for their unique appearance and distinctive hunting technique. Uh, they have a bizarre and otherworldly appearance with a large head, enormous mouth, and long, slender body. 
one of their most prominent features is a special specialized growth and specialized growth. It's called the Elysium that extends from the forehead tipped with a bioluminescent lure known as the Esca. Esca. Yeah. That's some like old Greek sounded shit. I know, but it doesn't say like, oh, where it originates from. And it's fucking, yeah. But the lure attracts prey in the dark depths of the ocean. They are ambush predators using the bioluminescent lure to attract the prey and striking when in range. They primarily feed on smaller fish, crustaceans, and cephalopods that are drawn in by the glowing lure. Once prey is close enough, the anglerfish quickly snaps its jaws shut, capturing its meal. Ugh, it's such a gross looking. Blech. They are gross looking, just like this little. Yeah, just this small little. Hella long fucking... teeth. Yes. Teeths. Te- yeah, teeths <laughs> with an F. Damn, teeths. Uh, the bioluminescent lure of the anglerfish is produced by a symbi- symbiotic bacteria living with <clears throat> within the esca. Hmm. The light produced by these bacteria attracts prey and aids in hunting. The light can be manipulated by the anglerfish to mimic the movements of prey, hmm. further enticing potential meals. That's why they call them the angler, because they're like fishermen almost. Yummy. Fishermen in the sea. They are. One last animal that I want to talk about, which is fucking crazy. I actually recently saw this and I was like, that's a fucking thing. Uh oh. I actually might talk about two, depends on how fast this goes. Because <laughs> uh, I just thought about another one I really want to talk about. The lion's mane jellyfish Ooh. is one of the largest and most recognizable species of jellyfish known for its striking appearance and stinging tentacles. Lion's mane jellyfish have a distinctive bell shaped body and can reach sizes of up to 6.6 feet wow. in diameter. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. Although larger specimens have been reported, they are named for their long trailing tentacles, which resemble a lion's mane and can extend for several meters. <laughs> These tentacles are divided into eight clusters and contain thousands of stinging cells named nema- nematocysts. Nematocysts. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, their diet are they are carnivorous predators that feed on a variety of small marine organisms, including fish, plankton, and other jellyfish species. They use their trailing tentacles to capture prey, paralyzing them with their stinging cells before transporting them to their mouth located at the center of their bell. Yeah. Uh, where. I wanted to state the size because it's actually fucking ridiculous how fucking huge these things are. How long? Yeah. Them hoes big. Dude, you should see a picture of them next to a diver. It's fucking... I might have... Well, I don't know if I've seen them, but I've seen some crazy long fucking ones. So uh, their, their tentacles can extend to impressive lengths with the longest recorded tentacles reaching up to... 120 feet. That's a fucking building. What the fuck? Like, it's a jellyfish that lives in our ocean. The fuck? And if you touch any part of those tentacles, you're six feet in diameter. So it's already in diameter taller than me or longer than me. Yeah. And then the fucking. For a hundred fucking feet. Oh my God. <laughs> Dude. Fucking love the ocean. That's fucked up. <laughs> I guess but, it makes sense though with them being in the ocean, you know, being the biggest fucking thing. They don't really got to worry about hitting anything. No, yeah, and, and you know they do get fed on, sure, quite often because they are a huge target. Yeah, pretty pretty hard to miss. I'm pretty sure their stings would probably fuck you up oh, too. For sure. Uh, their habitat. Uh, they are found in cold and temperate waters throughout the world's oceans from the Arctic to the North Atlantic, North Pacific, and Northern parts of the Southern Ocean. That would be tropical, though. Northern parts of the Southern Ocean? Yeah, Southern Ocean, Mm -hmm. Southern Hemisphere, but the North part of that Southern Mm -hmm. would be in the tropical zone. I would would think. But it just said that they, 
I don't know. <laughs> don't make sense. Unless it's unless there's an actual legitimate like southern ocean mm. that they're talking about. I don't know. I don't know either. Uh, um, they're they are often encountered in coastal areas, estuaries. There it is again. <laughs> uh, I love estuaries. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking if you couldn't tell. And then oh, the sting. The tentacles of lion's mane jellyfish contain powerful stinging cells called nematocysts. <laughs> I had to say that slow, so I was like, wait, I said this correctly before. I had to break it down. Which can deliver a painful and potentially dangerous sting to humans. Contact with the tentacles can cause skin irritation, redness, and even allergic reactions to sensitive individuals. It's essential to avoid touching. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ecological impact. While lion's mane jellyfish are not considered a major threat to marine ecosystems, large blooms of these jellyfish can have ecological consequences. They can compete with other marine organisms for food and space, and their presence may disrupt local ecosystems and fisheries. I bet. Hmm. I bet they're kind of just in the way. <laughs> Fucking huge. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Can't go under them. <laughs> gotta try to go around them. I mean, you could. You just gotta go way, way down. Down. <laughs> just, down. More, you know, way more down than I'd prefer to yeah. go. And, and anybody would. <laughs> okay, one last one. Do it. Just do to it. close it out. The Portuguese man of war. Uh, is that another jellyfish? Yes and no. Okay. I don't actually think it's considered a jellyfish. Like, it's not within the same family, but it looks like a floating trash bag. Okay, yeah, tell me. You've seen that one, right? I'm, the one floats along on the top of the water. I believe I may have. Uh, it's a fascinating and potentially dangerous marine organism, with uh, often mistaken for a jellyfish. Mm. The Portuguese man of war is not a single organism, but a colony of specialized polyps working together. It consists of a gas filled bladder. Or float that sits on the surface of the water, resembling a sail, hmm. and long trailing tentacles that extend below the surface or the water surface. Hmm. The float can vary in color, including blue, purple, pink, or translucent, depending on the individual and environment conditions. They are found in warm and tropical su and subtropical waters worldwide, including the Atlantic, Indian, and Pacific Oceans. They are often carried by ocean currents and winds, leading to occasional sightings in temperate regions. Uh, the Portuguese, the tentacles of the Portuguese man of war can extend up to thirty feet in length. They're still fucking long. <laughs> and armed with venom-filled nematocysts. <laughs> <laughs> that word just keeps coming back, bro. They're like say it again. <laughs> say, say my name. Say it again. Used to capture prey and defend against predators. These stinging cells can cause severe pain, skin irritation, and allergic reactions to humans upon contact. Uh, they primarily feed on small fish and plankton, which are ensnared in their tentacles. Once prey is immobilized by the venom, specialized polyps called gastrozoids <laughs> digest and absorb nutrients from the captured organisms. Despite their powerful sting, they have several natural predators, including sea turtles. Okay. Sea turtles also feed on jellyfish for those that... That's ballsy. I didn't know that. Yeah. Certain species of fish and some marine birds. <clears throat> However, they are also vulnerable to damage from rough seas, mm. strong currents, and predation or yeah, predation by other marine uh, organisms. Okay. They're fragile little guys. They are very fragile. Just like jellyfish. Yep. Very, very soft, very um, jelly-like. <laughs> but they pack a punch. Sure, yeah. And like I said, they do look like floating trash bags. So if you are in the ocean you happen to see a floating trash bag, don't fucking Don't touch. Yeah. Don't touch it. Yeah, it's already bad enough that a lot of jellyfish are very see-through, especially the box jellyfish. Oh, and they'll fuck you up. Uh, so just be aware of your surroundings in the ocean. Yeah, yeah. If you see something in the ocean, just uh, anything, safe bet. Don't don't fucking touch it. Yeah, don't touch it. Yeah, nope. Also, because human intervention without knowledge of the ocean is bad for the ecosystem. Right. Yep. 
with any ecosystem really any ecosystem <laughs> for but, sure but, but, but that's the one we're talking about today but the ocean very important 70 70 yeah. percent of the fucking world i would imagine it's very important to preserve that as much as possible you know that shit will be here after we're gone <sighs> yeah i would i think right you would hope yeah mm. Unless we go straight like Mad Max and there's no oceans at all anymore, you know, it's just... Fucking... Did Mad Max not have oceans, like, period? Yeah, like, I think, uh... I know, because... I've Mad never Max, watched the movie, so Mad, I don't know. Mad Max is, like, based in... Well, like, originally it was, like, made by, like, uh, like Australian dudes, I think, or some shit. Because, like, the car he drives is, like, a Australian car. Like, brand, yeah. Yeah, I forget the name. But, um, yeah, like, that's the part of Mad Max. Like, the desert he's in, I forget which ocean it was, but it's an ocean that's hmm. dry now. And that's the whole thing in Mad Max. You can't fucking find water. Damn. Yep. And that's why I like the dude. I forget his name. It's like the opposite of Waterworld. Yeah. Literally the exact opposite. Waterworld, the whole planet was ocean. I remember that. Got just seen... mad flooded and then humans were adapting and growing webs in between their fucking fingers and shit. Damn. That makes sense. Give it, a, give it a few hundred years, you know? That will shit will start happening. Hell yeah. Fucking yeah. Ugh, man. Forget what fucking ocean it was. It doesn't matter. But yeah, I remember like, I, I remember, oh, it was the guy in Mad Max Fury Road, Emerton, in, 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 Emerton Joe something, bad guy. Mm. And he's like in his fucking like canyon is castle. He, is he the one with the long hair and the mask? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, okay. yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he's like, you know, he had, people are all gathering down at the base. Oh, and he just, water pours out, gives them a little bit of water. They're fucking Killing trying each to, other trying to collect as much water as they can Shit, fuck. he just turns it on for like a little bit and then off <laughs> fuck you guys jesus fuck and they're coming out with another one of those if you didn't know i do know furiosa i work in a movie theater oh duh <laughs> duh and uh chris Hemsworth in it isn't it too and anna yeah he he doesn't look like he fits uh, anya taylor joy that's the one mm -hmm. she's playing the young furiosa i've seen the the trailer or not trailer but i seen the movie poster for it and looking at chris, uh, chris hemsworth i go he doesn't even like look the same he doesn't look like he fits in this universe yeah like it's one of those things i don't know I mean, there may be me being judgy but i don't know I, he's not i don't know i don't know how to really describe how he doesn't fit but it just looks off yeah he's yeah maybe he's just not the type you know, we've seen him so much in other things, it's hard to imagine him in something else. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mad Max, they call it the Great White Sand, is dried up Pacific Ocean. Pacific Ocean? Mm -hmm. Sheesh, that's a lot. Yeah. God. Crossing over a moon. I forget, there's like lore, like this shit just. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> the moon's worth gone. Jesus. More than that. Fucking, yeah, I forgot, like the lore, like the Earth just started heating up. Just. It's probably have some, having something to do with like global warming that they're trying to do. Yeah, hundred episodes, hundo. Been two years. Yeah, much needed break. Yeah. So, want to thank you once again for tuning into Big F and Nerds for hopefully the hundredth time. If you guys have kept up all this time, yeah. Uh, don't forget to check out the bio for. All of our other socials, uh, there's still going to be the link down at the bottom to donate to the podcast and help us out for any possible future episodes. We are going to be focusing on gaming as of late. Uh, we have a few videos out already, three to be exact for Helldivers, mm -hmm. uh, game footage on our youtube so be sure to check those out pretty funny stuff we get a bunch of our other buddies involved yeah so it's not going to be just me and matt it'll be a few other guys that you won't recognize their voices sometimes but it's all good content it's all at good. the end of the day it's all good and we've been we've been kind of like balls deep in hell diver oh, so it's kind of stupid <laughs> <laughs> it actually is kind of stupid i'm like dude why am i so like <sighs> gotta play this cute fucking game i gotta play this that's what I feel like. I just like I gotta play. I gotta play. I got. I gotta kill looks. I have to. Like today, I was like hella itching. Like, I need to play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like I was planning because I got like early half day work. I was like, yeah, I'd probably go home, go to bed. I, like, mm -hmm. I can probably play a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you get home, you're just like beep beep. <laughs> Time is it? Doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So it does, but I'm not gonna look. 
so yeah be sure to check us out on all of that stuff we'll still be around we just we're gonna be taking a little little possible break yep uh for the podcast for a lot longer than our yeah. normal week yeah normally we take just a week off when we do our little season in mm. between season break but we're gonna, we're gonna we're gonna take this break see if we want to you know restructure how we kind of want to work this shit out mm-hmm. what we can do to make it better might be a revamp yeah might come back with other ideas mm-hmm. um but we'll let you guys know we'll try to be more now that we'll have the time i'm going to try to focus a little bit more on the socials and kind of throw some posts out there and just keep you guys informed on what it is uh we're going to be doing and yeah but we won't be gone because we got those gameplay videos more coming mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so we won't be gone so that means Please still watch us. Stay. <laughs> Stay. Don't go. Please don't leave. Please. <laughs> I'm begging you. I literally fucking need you. Please don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> literally, uh, without without you guys watching, this don't mean nothing. So, yeah. keep, keep doing it. Yeah. This small group of people that enjoy <laughs> us. <laughs> yeah, keep keep it coming. And we'll try to, we'll, and we will try to keep it coming. Mm-hmm. And, you know, other than that, you know, don't cry, Matt. It's you okay. Know, okay. It brings to me some words my grandpappy used to tell me. Oh, my fucking God. What was his name? Not on the 100th episode. Just kidding. Not remember his no. name. His name was Matthias Tobias of the fucking 43rd whatever cavalry brigade, otherwise known as the Tussie Tusslers. <laughs> as he always used to say. Later, taters. What the fuck? I thought he was gone. I, t- I told you once, I'd tell you again. Matthias Tobias is eternal. <laughs> I don't, don't make me tell you again. <sighs> Alright, bye everyone. We'll see ya. Adios, everybody. <laughs>